Hi everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Every October it seems like it's time for some winter spruce ups, some end of the summer paint jobs. We've gotten past the intense heat where it's so hard to work in the heat and we end up painting houses. This house has needed a little bit of a touch up. Last year I went around the back side, the garage side, and in the breezeway area. It really made a difference. And on this side of the house, it's got some cracked siding that my husband had caulked before we painted it before. And in those areas, it never held the paint quite right. So we're gonna be doing some scraping, some painting, and some curb appeal upgrades. This house has had these aluminum awnings over the windows for years. Now we've owned this house for probably 25 years and it has always bothered me that these were on here. It makes the house look dated. Um, we're dealing with this like yellowish brick which kind of blends in once you're looking at the yellow paint and maybe some shutters would help draw some attention away from the color of this chimney. So one thing I can do is I can power wash the chimney. I can use um, an acid wash on it and we can make it look a little bit better. The second thing is taking these awnings off and putting nice plantation style shutters on it. You could do the closed raised uh, panel ones. I think I've got some on hand. So don't think it's complicated to get these off. There is a bolt holding here and on the opposite side here, I've already pulled those out. And then there's a steel rod that goes above the window up there. If you can see that. Uh, let's see, okay, right there. That steel rod going across, it's hooked right there. And somehow, somewhere, this hook has disappeared. I don't know how long it's been like that, but I noticed it was hanging a little crooked. So you just lift that off. I'm gonna need a second hand here. And because they're aluminum, they're pretty lightweight. So it's not a real difficult day long job to even get them off just getting them off in the prep work of this isn't going to take me very long. It's gonna take me longer to track down a ladder to get the ones from the second story. And because this is the west side of the house, they've only done this um, awning protection. It helps reduce the sunlight going into the house so that heat never gets into the house, which is really great for old air conditioning systems like this. I already said in another video, we're doing all the energy savings we can, but that's not going to be used anymore and these awnings I don't know that it's worth all that hassle <laughs> to put them back up when I want to do shutters anyway I don't think you can do both it would look not right so real easy I'm gonna go up there I'm gonna to try to save the brackets so that I can sell these and that will help pay for the paint for the shutters and I did find a set in the garage now I'm doing this on a budget and I'm doing it within reason of uh, time constraints, you know, money obviously. So you can see the front of the house has just the two awnings here, no problem. This is the problem awning. And if I paint it black, it's gonna stand out more. But with black shutters, maybe it's just gonna all tie in together. Because if I left it white with black shutters, I don't know, the side rails uh, standing could use uh, some new paint. And it's really a bummer to not have a covered porch. So I believe it is staying. Um, it is kind of a two to four person job just to get that down. And I think these down parts are anchored into um, a brick wall flower bed behind the bushes. So I don't wanna to draw too much attention all at once. The main thing is to get the house painted and to get the window shutters off. Um, the thing about the window shutters is they do darken the rooms inside quite a bit. And I want that natural light to get in um, because now you have so many options with different window blinds and sheer curtains um, for that little bit of privacy that you might need. So I'm gonna continue to think about the porch awning um, while I get these down. And I just wanted to show you a quick before shot of the front so that you can compare the difference of the final when we're done. Now the most use you're gonna get out of these is in the summer months. And in Michigan, we've only got about three months of summer. So I think the benefit of having the sunlight come in the windows is greater than of the cooling uh, feature of having these. And as long as I'm up here, again, we're checking for winterization. So we've got a pretty nice gap right here. I was actually just watching um, a special on home 
uh, energy effectiveness. And they said in a new build, these gaps can accumulate to nine square feet in a modern build. So when you're talking about a 70 year old home like this, I would imagine those gaps can really add up to a much more uh, greater deficit of nine square feet. We are going to take the store windows out so that we can caulk the interior windows, windows as we paint. So keep that in mind also because the windows are as old as the house. It's interesting to take this down myself. The last time they were off, I think I was pregnant for this guy and my husband has been here. He had them off when he painted. He labels everything when he uh, takes them off to make it much simpler for putting them back on. But here's my pile of aluminum. Now you can recycle these and you can take them straight to a recycling center. Don't just put them out by the road for free because aluminum is very high in scrap value. So to take these in could um, add up to quite a bit of paint. So like I said, painting shutters, buying new shutters, anything like that, we're gonna do what we can. I hadn't considered these chimney flanking windows here. Um, over here, I've got all the room in the world, nothing to be able to put another one next to here, which is an option with this style of house. I had another house that was similar like this. This one bumps out a little further. I can only do an eight to a nine inch shutter on either side of this without running into the corner. And standard shutters are 14 inch. So this side of the house may not get shutters. We may only be able to do the very front. Which would still add quite a bit of character because if I cut these bushes back or remove them entirely, I'm thinking about just putting some new plantings here. Um, it's overgrown. They were growing way up and I had to work on painting some areas here last summer. Um, but starting all out stark is very hard to do. And with these old bushes like this, when you get down um, past that top, they start losing a lot of green. So you can't cut them down too far because you're gonna be left with nothing. So I've just been trying to keep them trimmed up. Um, any existing flower beds have long been grown out and turned to grass over the years. So it's gonna look better no matter what we do. Well, the work wasn't too bad. It only took a few hours and I am ready for primer and paint. I did some measurements. I can't do shutters up on that top window because of the angle of the roof. So I'm trying to figure something else out. So with a little bit of thought and thinking while I was resting, I decided I would scrub this clean. I got a lot of algae here, so I'm just using some mild dish soap with a splash of bleach in my bucket to get it all clean. Now these side flashings are screwed on here and then this scalloped edge is riveted on to this piece separately. This dated scalloped edge is what was really bothering me and I was trying to figure out about adding like a cedar strip here or something that would give that a different look. I can drill those right out. I can take this off if I want to and have this more open. It would add more light to in here. So for now, I'm scrubbing it clean while I think about whether I wanna take the sides off or not. And something similar going on up there, that roof line, a standard uh, shutter from Home Depot, PVC, vinyl, they're 14 and 15 inches and you can custom order 12 inch ones and I have custom ordered skinnier ones in the past, but that's not gonna give me much of a look up there. I think I'm gonna go with a resiled awning up there, a shutter here, and on this window also. Um, normally we have a flag hang here. It catches all the wind from the west and it ends up flipping. So I think I'm going to take that off and reposition it someplace else um, because it just gets caught in the wind every day. And that's not respectful um, of a way to hang a flag. The tree up above needs trimming and it has sheltered the flag somewhat, but it's a daily occurrence. The um, old, like mason jar style lights are so cute and adorable. They are great for this age of house, but it's been painted over. It needs a refresh, so we will clean and wash that and put a fresh coat of paint on it so that it stands out a little bit more. And I'm thinking about boxing these in. Um, they are structural. They're holding up 
the top but I was realizing how bad this one is and I actually saw something where somebody had boxed these in with like one by eights maybe. Um, so that could be an option there also because they have to stay and they have to help for support. But this center part is rusted right through. So on the porch awning and on the window awnings, uh, these are all riveted together with this little rivet. Um, you can look up about rivets and pop rivet guns. They're real easy to use. They are a permanent fixture that doesn't come off. So what you have to do um, is drill it right out and you can do it from the inside or the outside. I'm going to be doing that scalloped edge. So I'll just be doing it probably from the top side uh, if I can get up there. Otherwise I'll have to drill upwards would be easier For safety of my eyes I'm gonna go ahead and wear eye protection ear protection for using the drill and I'm gonna wear gloves because this uh, metal edge can be very sharp and it's been out there for 70 years so we want to keep it clean and just to show you for instance like here is one of the shutters and it's got these side returns that's basically what's going on on that front porch this one was next to the chimney so it doesn't have the side return so you can see that whole framework here on the side and what I'm thinking about doing is putting one long piece of ribbed steel roofing on a section possibly two or three and taking the lower sections off and shortening it so that I can use one of these for that upper window so I will tell you, I'm liking the way it's looking already. I decided to go ahead and use the paint to see what it would look like with the sides painted black or possibly taking them off. And I like the way they're looking painted black with that scalloped edge off. I learned a trick a long time ago. Um, the porch at Mackinac Island uh, at the Grand Hotel is painted a real pretty blue, kind of the color of this house here. And that helps repel spiders and bugs. We get a lot of cobwebs and whatnot up in there. So I may do that to help bring in some light and it would look like artificial um, skylight from the inside of the house also. So that is an option to do there. But look how that looks without that scalloped edge. So on to my shutters. These were originally molded um, PVC with the color dye in the plastic and about five years ago I used this paint on my shutters with a big um, sprayer and I probably made a video on that if you want to look back in the playlist on adding curb appeal to your house. Uh, it goes a lot faster with a sprayer. I don't have it with me and I've only got four shutters to paint. So setting that up and cleaning it can be quite a job. Um, that being said, I had one set of shutters to do on the garage a year ago and I used Rust-Oleum uh, paint and primer in one for plastic and it's already peeling off. So the exterior house paint seems to be the way to go because it's lasting and durable. I did bare paint on another house many years ago on the same shutters. I had gotten a whole bunch of them for free because people were changing to the uh, raised sh uh, panel shutters. This is called louvered with a cathedral top and something about the center that was special about it also. So you can pick up stuff like this really cheap or for free from people who are updating their home a different way. Another option for this house with that small window up there was to go with um, like board and batten homemade shutters. But after I thought more about it, I thought the awning would look nice because it would kind of be like eyebrows on a face. Just add that look to it, the finished look. Another option would be to add a pediment um, which is uh, detail over the top of the window. A lot of times they're um, common on colonial style homes and over doors, not so much on windows. And I thought that wasn't really keeping with the age of the house. So the shutters 
are a great way to go. And this is just leftover paint from another project. If you don't let your paint freeze, it can last quite a while. It was two years ago, I think, that I bought this paint. And it's holding up very well. It's spreading nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set of four shutters painted out because it's going to probably be uh, a touch-up coat after this. I can see just a little bit of color through so that they will have a couple of days of drying time um, before they're actually hung. One of the things that I wanted to mention is the front of the house. I wanted it done on Saturday um, for prep work and Sunday for painting because this house is on a main road or street and it gets a lot of traffic. Like right now I have some people from the neighborhood driving by very slowly gawking and seeing what's going on. They see the ladders and whatnot. I try to do this kind of work um, in a day or in two days to be quick just because I prefer it. It doesn't mean you have to. And keep in mind, these home shows that are on TV renovations, there is so much behind the scenes stuff. And uh, I used to watch one out of Canada that the guy would give the homeowners homework uh, to finish up at night. There's a whole crew that's in there when that camera's not in the room or on the outside of a house. I end up like scraping caulk around windows and painting the trim and going back to the storm windows and the screens and things like that. So. You know, you have to consider that. I'm on day three right now. Um, my helpers, I have teenage boys, they all kind of bailed on me. If there's food, they disappear. So uh, a lot of this has been, you know, two hours of my son working and then the rest of it, all me. And I'm still going home and doing farm chores too. So keep that in mind. Um, do the best you can. Because I'm not in a color change, this is kind of like doing a touch-up coat of paint on your manicure. Um, I'm covering the old paint, and just to show you, you know, like I said, it's been, uh, my son's 17, so I think it was 2016 um, that we painted this. So it's peach looking from fade over time and it's actually supposed to be bright yellow. I'm having that paint as a base coat and that speeds things up. Now, on another house a couple years ago, um, it was a complete color change. That's a lot more detailed because um, it just is. And I'm using a paint and primer in one. I had some primer to use up that was all white. So on my first day of priming, I used that because I was trying to stretch out my yellow paint um, because the paint primer is more expensive but it's speedy and it'll save you a lot of time so keep these things in mind before you say husband I want to do this or I want to do that my husband's not here helping me he's at the farm doing hay and earning a living there this is something that needs to be done to help kind of you know do maintenance on the house and winter will be here before we know it. We are in fall. We're in October already. So if something needs to be done, they say, okay, I can do this and I can take that off of your plate. I'm not going to give my husband or my kids a big honey-do list. If they want to help and they're available, that's great. But it doesn't have to be done in one day. I can manage it even if it's a week. A good example of that is this house was built 70 years ago and it's a beautiful home and they were able to live in it and use the basement before they like had the house built and then they gradually got the main floor built and the um, attic upstairs bedrooms weren't finished when we bought the house and they had probably owned the house for 50 years at that point. It's 70 years now later and this porch cap still hasn't been done. All the way around there's a flower bed and rainwater just collects in there. Now, if you were out east in like Pennsylvania, that water would go down there and crack these all apart. I'm gonna see about some flat uh, like paving things because these are four inches and see about getting this capped all the way around before winter.
it does not all always come together as quickly as you hope but I got it all done everything's got a fresh coat of paint I'm off to go pick up some flowers for these flower pots and I'll start in on the side of the house after a couple of rain days so everyone in the neighborhood has mums and you don't see these very often they're called celiosa and they are also referred to as coxcomb so they're a real vibrant purple I think it just really stands out nice all of the mums were either lavender burgundy or yellow and I didn't need more yellow so that gives just a little bit of subtle color so I'm not quite done yet not quite by a long shot I'm ending up with some rain today that wasn't really forecasted so I'm gonna shut the house up and call it for the day and hope that maybe it might not rain tomorrow I hate to leave it with primer on it and that's the benefit of having paint with primer however in areas where I have gotten down to bare wood um, or where there was any algae on the side of the house which this house has a tree um, shadowing it quite a bit shading it you can see above that kitchen window there it's a little more green so I went ahead and just kept priming as long as I had the paint out to keep it going and then I'll get better coverage with my yellow so hopefully I'll be back at this tomorrow and I've been getting some ideas about a lime wash on this brick and for now since this is gonna stay maybe I'll give it a fresh coat of tan or gray paint just to make it blend in a little bit with the cement blocks because it's kind of an eyesore right now and it just has to stay temporarily so when I started this video I was hoping to be able to get this painted the front of the house on Sunday and maybe the side of the house on Monday I had said before I had a teenage boy or two helping me and the help was weak <laughs> so the weather turned bad and I wasn't able to get the side of the house painted so if you look over here I'm in primer I had decided I was down to bare wood that it would be better to get that primer on there quickly rather than trying to get a second coat so I've got my yellow paint all mixed up ready to go when you are down to bare wood in some areas or some cases you may need a second coat so when I painted my primer they said it was gonna rain at 7 o'clock that night it started raining at like 530 so if you look way up there above that window <laughs> it started running and like it wasn't drying on the house because the rain came so fast and came early so not a problem because it's a primer just primer only and it's water-based so it kind of washed off there's a real funny episode of curious George where George and Bill were trying to do a bunch of jobs in the wrong weather and the paint ran off of the shed they were painting told my kids that's what happened to me at work so I'm back at it it's supposed to be a sunny beautiful day today and it was misting this morning now the thing about this latex paint is it needs to be over 50 degrees for eight hours after um, you've applied the paint so at this point right now I have eight hours it was cool this morning and wet it dried up the siding did not get wet from that mist um, it was coming from the north instead of from the west so I'm good to go and it's actually turning supposed to be a little better tomorrow but not um, a full eight hours by the time the sun warms up in the morning and at night so basically I have to try to get this house painted in about two hours so that I can be within that eight hour period so up the ladder I go all the way up there and a little trick for you that peak is so high and I have my ladder extended as much as I am comfortable with. I like to keep it uh, extended with that overlap um, by at least one bar. I've got a little giant ladder that extends and it's got the wings, but that thing is so hard. And I've got this maple tree above me, so it's real hard to maneuver around that. Um, if you take a cutoff section of PVC or even aluminum tubing that you can pinch, you can put your handle in that PVC pipe and it will give you an extension um, for however long you need. If not, get out some duct tape and uh, tape your brush to a broom handle. Anything you gotta do to get it done. So I'm back at it again, yet another day 
even though it had rained yesterday during the day, today ended up being nicer. So I'm able to go around, do up any uh, touch up painting. I just ran myself out of paint to finish up the side of the house. It is looking so good. And husband came over and he gave me a little helping hand. The air conditioner unit is disconnected from the house. It's getting an upgrade in uh, heating and air conditioning, everything like I said. There's no reason to have this sit here all winter when we can take it into the scrap yard. We called them. It doesn't matter. Um, they take refrigerators, they take air conditioners and things like that. Some places will give you a, um, like a deduction or like a, uh, a fee for uh, purging the Freon in it. This line was cut long ago. There's no Freon in it. Um, it had quit working and you know, whatever. So uh, we don't have to worry about that. A tip I wanted to share with you is they have these rubber boots that go on the end of your ladder. Now these rubber boots have been on here a long, long time, probably 15 or maybe 20 years, and they've worn through. So I noticed the last time I moved the ladder that it left a little silver mark. So I am going to just flip this around, and it's like having a whole brand new one on there. And same thing, you can see, this is the house I painted last year, this is the house I'm painting this year. It really helps a lot in saving um, and speaking of saving, I was thinking about um, the want or the need for new siding. This is cedar wood siding, and that's why I'm able to paint it. Our vinyl siding on our house is rated for 10 years. If you bump it with the weed whacker in any way, it shreds. It is brittle from um, UV exposure, and some newer sidings are better than that, but my mother-in-law recited her whole house 10 years ago and it's supposed to be guaranteed not to fade or peel or have any problems they had to paint it this year so nothing's foolproof and like I said before my paint thing for this said like 16 years ago I still had leftover paint and the paint was still good and I painted the other side of the house last year well everybody my house is all done I got all my paint I went around an extra day and I made sure all my windows were caulked for the winter. Then switching out storm windows and painting them inside for a couple of days. And the weather just keeps turning to fall a little bit at a time. So keep watching, subscribe and get notifications so you see what happens next. I'm planning some things for storm doors and who knows what else. We know we're going to power wash this and clean this. I've been working on the garage a little bit today, doing some touch-up coats from last year's job of that. And we are starting in on roofing, so maybe you can join us for that. I appreciate your time spent watching the videos and the likes and the shares and all the positive comments. Keep them coming, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.